welcome all of you since last two three classes we have been discussing about analysis of the heteronuclear spectra spectra of varieties of nuclei like fluorine phosphorus boron silicon mercury varieties of examples we took and we knew how we can extract the coupling especially for abundant spin phosphorus fluorine if you do how to get the coupling of the abundant spin and from the satellites we could get the coupling between abundant rate spin and then i took the example of boron boron we have two isotopes boron 10 and boron 11 i and boron 11 is going to give you four peaks of equal intensity because of spin 3 by 2 boron 10 gives seven peaks of equal intensity when it is coupled to spin of nuclei like proton carbon or fluorine like that that's what we observed and we could get the coupling between boron and proton fluorine etc similarly silicon nmr we took the example of couple of molecules we could see one bond silicon coupling two bond silicon coupling how the spectrum can be complex we can get the coupled proton proton coupled silicon spectrum proton decoupled and we can get when they, we do proton decoupled silicon coupling to other dilute spin like carbon you could get carbon silicon coupling like that so many such examples we took and we can go we go ahead with few more nuclei of course there are several isotopes in the entire nmr periodic table all elements and all examples we cannot take few more examples which can, which you routinely come across i am going to discuss because all these things when you do with the bio nmr chemistry you know in the chemical applications or material science we come across these things so i am going to take few more examples of some standard nuclei okay we'll start today with what is called nitrogen 15 nmr and nitrogen 14 nmr nitrogen 15 of course is spin half nuclei abundance is 0.37 percent nitrogen 14 is spin 1 abundance is large 99.63 percent so and interestingly this is quadrupolar nuclei very rarely you know we, we are going to get sharp peaks there but we will see what to do i am going to look at the nh 14 spectrum of nh 4 cl i am looking at 14 nmr coupled to equivalent four protons like we saw you know bh4 what is the type of uh, spectrum you are going to get four protons are equivalent and coupled to spin one doesn't matter whatever the spin of this coupled nuclei but these are chemically equivalent four protons it's been half two ni plus one if you do if you apply four into half into plus one you get five peaks exactly you are going to get five peaks and measure the separation this is going to give you 14n and 1h coupling remember it is a, one of the rare example because nitrogen 14 usually is a quadrupolar spin very broad and you generally it broadens the signal but here is an example this in this in nmr jargon we call ax4 spin system because nitrogen proton or uh, heteronuclei four equivalent proton we call it as ax4 spin system and and we are looking at a part of ax4 it is going to be a quintet like this and directly we can measure the separation and get the nitrogen 14 proton coupling of course we can also look for the 15 n nmr of a simple molecule like ethylene diamine you see remember taking taking the nitrogen 15 nmr spectrum in natural abundance is a fairly a difficult task because nitrogen 15 abundance is 0.37 percent very difficult to see that unless you are lab labeling the system of, uh, and also further it is a negative magnetic moment we have to do a lot of NOE you know trans etc I will discuss later for enhancing the signal but usually nitrogen 15 is if, although the spin of nuclear fairly difficult to detect, detect because of its sensitivity but nevertheless we can still do it and this is an example of ethylene diamine in CDCL3 and this is spectrum there are two spectra here like given one is proton decoupled other is proton coupled in the case of proton decoupled you can clearly see we are going to get a single peak because there is only uh, there is a symmetry here there are only two nitrogens here both are chemically equivalent so you are going to get a single peak but how many couplings you can get off if, if you want to look for the coupling you can have one bond proton coupling okay and then this ch2 this two bond and this can also have three bond coupling so you have three different couplings if you look at the proton coupling and there is also proton coupled spectrum given here and this is a very funny pattern of quintet why do we get this quintet this can happen only when this is also equivalent these two are equivalent coupling triplet of triplet it's, it's so that 
some of the lines are overlapped. We have, we have taken the example of in the proton spectral analysis of the multiplicity pattern. It is triplet of triplet so that both the couplings are equal somehow as a consequence you are going to get a quintet. You ask me a question what happened to one bond coupling? Why I am not seeing that? One bond coupling has to be large in this. But in this case one bond coupling is absent due to rapid exchange. We do not see one bond coupling here. We are seeing only two bond and three bond coupling almost are equal approximately. As a consequence the nitrogen 15 coupled proton spectrum a proton coupled spectrum is a quintet for this molecule. Of course, usually you know if you look at the pro nitrogen 15 NMR spectrum they are very simple because in a given molecule they hardly there will be few nitrogens 2 or 3 or 4 3 4 nitrogens will be present unless you go to a protein, protein etc. where there are too many amino acids present and each amino acid has enriched proton you will have lot of nitrogens. If you go to a big protein there will be too many nitrogens, but in a small organic molecules simple molecule like this hardly there will be 2, 3 nitrogens. So, we have 2 nitrogens in this molecule this is a proton decoupled NMR spectrum here of nitrogen 15 you are going to get only a doublet very simple you got a doublet very easy to uh, interpret which and which ok. We will go to tin NMR tin is also another interesting thing tin has 3 isotopes tin 119, tin 117 and tin 115 all have spin off all the isotopes have spin off all are NMR active but only thing is all are negative magnetic moment similar to nitrogen 15 does not matter as far as the detection is concerned let us not worry about it at the moment. Tin 115 is very low natural abundance 0 0.34 similar to nitrogen 15 and since it is 0 0.68 compared to carbon 13 if it is taken as one. So, practically we can ignore tin 115 we will worry only about 119 and 117. <coughs> and 119 and 117 have almost equal actual abundance very interesting you see if you almost 7.7 and 8.6 take, take as both equal abundance 8 8 sensitivity of 17 is 19.9 about 20 this is 20, 26 these are all some information to analyze the tin NMR spectrum. Let us analyze the tin NMR spectrum of SNH3 minus and it is deuterated analogs in liquid ammonia. You will remember I, this statement tells me deuterated analogs. So, I take SNH3 minus is my molecule. It is deuterated analogs means we do not know how many deuteration is possible. It can be SND3, SNH2D, SNHD2, SNH3 all acetopomers are possible ok. So, this spectrum is a combination of all those things. Now, our job is to identify which is which and analyze it. Of course, if you carefully look at it there is a lot of isotropic effect here you can see that chemical shift isotropic effect is such that peaks have been drifted quite a bit. Look at this one this is a paper taken from the paper Chemcom 1987. First of all SNH3 you consider how many peaks you expect if you look at a tin NMR tin 119 we are looking at you will get only a quadrat because all the three protons are chemically equivalent. So, it will be a quadrat of intensity 1331 this I would say is H n H 3 minus without any difficulty ok. What are the other combinations we can think of S n D 2 H that is also possible ok. We will see what are the possible combinations, what are the isotopomers, where we can assign each of this I would say S n H 2 D. Why did I say that? Remember these two protons split this into a triplet, it is a triplet here center of this to center of this center of this 1 is 2 is 2 and triplet and each line of this triplet is split because of deuterium in which is spin 1 into 3 lines of equal intensity see you are got this is what you got. I would clearly say this can be assigned to S n H 2 D minus what about the next one next one I would say this is S n H D 2 why because this is a doublet because of proton coupling. So, tin will split into a doublet and then each end of the doublet is split because 2 equivalent deuterium into a pentad like this. 
वन टू थ्री टू वन विच विज आर्लियर टू ड्यू टेम इक्वेलेंट वन इट स्प्लिट्स स्पिन ऑफ न्यूक्लियर इट विल मेक इट वन टू थ्री टू वन पेंटेड दैट्स वाट यू गेट फर्स्ट दिस डबल इज बिकॉज ऑफ एस एन एच कपलिंग एंड ईच ऑफ दिस पेंटेड इज कमिंग बिकॉज ऑफ ड्यू टेम कपलिंग सो दैट्स ऑल्सो पॉसिबल वी कूड एनालाइज वाट इज द नेक्स्ट आल्टर पॉसिबल नेक्स्ट आइस आउट ऑफ अमर वी कैन थिंक ऑफ आर नेक्स्ट अनालाग ऑफ दिस मॉलिक्यूल नेक्स्ट इज एस एन डी थ्री नो प्रोटीन एट ऑल देन हाउ मेनी पीक्स यू टू एक्सपेक्ट यू एक्सपेक्ट इन दैट पुट इट इन टूर इक्वेशन टू एन ए प्लस वन सो आई इज इक्वल टू वन सो टू इन टू देर आर थ्री ड्यूट्रियम सिक्स प्लस वन देर शुड बी सेवन लेंस इयर आल आर नाट रिजॉल्ट आल आर नाट क्लियरली विजिबल इट इज पोर सिग्नल टू नाइस रेशियो इन रियालिटी इफ यू गेट ए गुड स्पेक्ट्रम यू शुड गिव रेस्ट सेवन पीक्स एंड आई वुड से दिस इज बिकॉज ऑफ एस एन टी थ्री सो ऑल दि बिग ग्रूप्स ऑफ पीक्स कैन बी ईजी लाइस टू डिफरेंट अनालाग्स ऑफ एस एन ए थ्री दिस एट टीन वन वन नाइन वेर यू गेट प्रोटॉन कपलिंग एंड प्रोटॉन ड्यूट्रीन कपलिंग बोथ आर प्रेजेंट इयर ओके एन एग्जाम्पल एंड यू कैन सी सी क्लियरली द आइसोटोपिक आइसोटोप इफेक्ट ऑन द केमिकल शिफ्ट इज एनॉर्मस दिस इज फॉर हेथ्री एंड डिप्लेस वन मच प्रोटॉन बाई ड्यूट्रियम एंड दिस शिफ्टेड बाई दिस मच and if you go in the ppm approximately about 3 to 3.2 ppm it has shifted huge shift in the chemical shift so this is because of isotope effect all right we will go to the another example of a molecule tin 119 spectrum of this simple molecule like this look at this molecule and every line here is a genuine peak and this group is expanded this group is expanded here this group is expanded here and these are peaks and there are only two tins here they are non equivalent two tins are there and we are getting so many peaks here how do we analyze this every peak has to be assigned so how do we do that we will start with the simple example analysis of the tin spectra first these two individual peaks can be there okay and possibility one both can be individual for tin two signals for tin 119 in two different environments of a that is it could be 115 let us say that will not couple at all there is no coupling between these two individual spins you get there is a possibility so both will give individual peaks here and pertains to two different molecules tin 119 for one one when it is a one it is b there are two peaks both the peaks corresponding to possibility one for a one for b and from two different molecules so strong peaks we can assign there is no coupling with anything else that's one possibility all other couplings are ignored now let us for this i have already discussed just because in future next uh, analysis of this molecule we come across ax spin system and the ax spin system is there we get two four peaks two for a and two for x that we have been discussing this separation gives you a doublet it is symmetric you know it is Uh, a is coupled to x x is coupled to a interaction is mutual so both will be doublets each will separation of the doublet in a or x will give you j coupling between a and x with this we'll consider what is the possibility there is a possibility molecule contains 1119 others 117 there are two isotopomers but remember both of them abundance i said 7.6 and 8.6 both of them are equally abundant both of them must be enough there could be a coupling between them we cannot stop that and both of them may have a different resonating frequency tin resonating frequency 119 and 117 are far apart megahertz away see frequency here it is written is they differ by 8.3 megahertz and coupling is very small so they are weakly coupled ax spin system and a 500 megahertz spectrometry for record chemical shift is uh, almost 8.3 megahertz separation and coupling between them is very small so i treat this a molecule if you consider both one is 119 other is 117 a coupled ax spin system 119 can couple to tin 117 it forms ax spin system where let us see ax spin system should give two doublets doublet for a and doublet for x okay in this pos possibility there are two such possibilities like this there is this is 119 this is 117 possible that is one molecule other molecule this is 117 this is 119 that's also possible there are two such possibilities so that means two ax spin systems 
2 a expense system means how much lines you expect 8 peaks 2 at you get for tin 119 um, 4 you get for tin 119 4 for tin 117 for each of this a x 2 lines will be there for this one from one a x another two lines from other a x similarly 4 lines here for 117 and 117 in the detect you get 4 peaks we are detecting 119. So, of the 2 a expense system 4 peaks should be able to we should be able to see that here ok and this is what it is this already we have assigned for this possibility I said yeah, one is a other is b I have written this is a this is b. So, this is one doublet because of I said the a expense system it has to be a doublet one doublet other doublet where it is going seen at 117 10 resonance we are not seeing that 8.3 megahertz away ok what about the other one this possibility is another doublet equal intensity exactly from the center you can see. So, 4 peaks you have said remaining 4 peaks if you want to see go to tin 117 n number fine. So, one doublet is detected for this other with this thing what happened other peaks of two, 4 peaks of a x if they are seen at tin 117 I told you. Now, what is the possibility 3 both can be 119 why we have to take this 117 this 119 why not both can be 119 that is definite possibility in which case it forms a a expense system ok one only a expense system and there exists a coupling between this and this and only one such possibility. So, this uh, there is a molecule possibility 3 both both thin could be 119 now that possibility should give rise to two doublets symmetrically placed for each of these two strong peaks A and B. So, we analyze this we analyze four dub peaks here. Now, what is left over this is one doublet this is another doublet which is coming because of this one ok. So, we could uh, easily make I as in these four peaks doublets coming because of coupling with is a situation where both are in 119 each forms a expense system gives doublets at the chemical sheet of both a and b. Another possibility this is 119 this is carbon 13 this is 119 this is carbon 13 there can be a coupling between them ok. In which case again it two for, forms two a expense system and four sets of doublets you get two doublets at 119 and where do you get the other set of doublets two doublets tin I am sorry carbon 13 1 that NMR. So, two doublets are seen each for the chemical of A and B and this we have analyzed this we have assigned this we have assigned and these are the 4 peaks very weak. So, with that also we could get 4 peaks each of them is giving 2 2 peaks doublets that is done ok. Next what happened other set of 2 doublets? they are seen at the 13 C resonance. What is the last possibility not last fifth possibility both could be 117 you do not see that in the tin 119 NMR because you have to go to tin 117 resonance which is 8.3 megahertz away then you will see all those peaks. What is the other possibility this is 117 this is carbon 13 this is 117 this is carbon 13 that is also possible. Okay, that you will see again in tin 117 fantastic you see so beautiful simple molecule each peak can be assigned ok. There are looking at varieties of possible isotopomers we could assign every peak every peak is genuine ok. Next we will go to the example of a lithium NMR lithium NMR is a consider this molecule we can see lithium 31 P 13 C all NMR spectrum of this molecule this is a lithium diphenyl phosphorine dimer. If you look at the lithium NMR here I am going to get a triplet why we are getting a triplet see lithium is coupled to phosphorus equivalent both are chemically equivalent equally coupled to two phosphorus as a consequence it is a triplet that we know when there are two equivalent spins coupled it will be a triplet and this separation gives me lithium phosphorus coupling very easy. And if I look for the carbon 13 NMR of it with proton decoupling you must get only 
phosphorus carbon coupling i am decoupling proton i am looking at carbon and very two co carbons are close by one is direct bonded to it is epso carbon other is this one these are all far away other cover ones here so we will expect at least look at two carbons one is epso carbon and ortho carbon each of them is a triplet why jpp is very large two carbon 13 forms have a ab xp system and coupling between them is ab is there and it is it is called a abx spectrum and we are looking at the x part of ab so this is what is happening as a consequence each of them is going to be a triplet okay jpp is so large to about 200 hertz as a consequence we get triplet for each of them and 13c appears as a triplet because of this all right and of course remember we are they breaking the coupling between proton here with with carbon we are going to going to get only phosphorus and uh, coupling and lithium coupling both could be we could see both of them selenium 77 nmr you can think of what is the selenium 77 nmr it is spin off nuclei natural abundance is only 7.6% let us look at this molecule how many peaks we can expect for this is a very big molecule this is a big name for it and we can see one bond selenium phosphorus coupling and we can say one two three four bond selenium phosphorus coupling also both are possible simply record the spectrum of it with proton decoupling you are going to get two peaks okay what are these two peaks coming from you can measure it this is coming because of one bond selenium phosphorus coupling why the why two peaks actually there is a symmetry only one selenium is you have to consider but there is a phosphorus coupling one bond that makes it a doublet so that's why this is a one bond selenium phosphorus coupling but each each of them is further there is a multiplicity why is it coming it is coming because of selenium coupling to phosphorus which is four bonds away and why there are no proton couplings you broken the coupling between pro selenium and phosphorus is a decoupled spectrum all right so as a consequence we see only that what about the analysis of the selenium spectrum of iodo selenophen if you look at it we look at the simple molecule we analyze the proton spectrum of it if you please remember when i analyze the proton spectra there is only one selenium one selenium there is a actually two bond selenium proton coupling it will be a doublet and there is also another proton coupled to selenium each end of the doublet is going to be another doublet so doublet of doublet and further what is happening is each layer of the doublet is split into three bond proton selenium coupling this iodine three bond selenium proton coupling this one doublet you see one doublet one doublet one doublet each of these four lines is split into further doublet doublet so it is going to be doublet of doublet of doublets ddd we are going to get and this is the pattern you are going to get and from the separation you can measure one bond selenium proton coupling and three bond selenium proton coupling and similarly we can look at the selenium nmr of this molecule what is that you are going to get if you look at the selenium nmr of this molecule see this is the structure it is what is called ax b4 spin system we are looking at the selenium x part of it so these four equivalent fluorine this is different fluorine these four equivalent fluorine this thing is split into a quintet and then each of the quintet is split into a doublet because of this coupling you understand we are looking at selenium this four equivalent fluorine splits this into a quintet and then each one of the quintet is split into a another doublet uh, because of coupling with another fluorine and this how it is this is a pentet of doublet i say pentet because this coupling is larger you see jxp is larger than this we always have to take the larger coupling so this how it is this is for center and then this is one peak and other peak coming because of see from the center there is going to be like i showed you this is a five peak pentet and each of these is split into a doublet like this you see as a consequence it is going to be pentet of doublets and this separation gives you this coupling of course you can also do xenon nmr xenon has spin 3 by 2 abundance is 21% xenon 129 spin is half abundance is 26.4% there are seven other isotopes we don't need to worry but look at this xenon nmr spectrum of ca3c in this molecule one bond xenon 
fluorine coupling is there. Xenon is directly bonded to fluorine. This is spin off nuclei. Xenon 120 if you do, it is going to be 6000 hertz. You see, large coupling. And each of them is further split because of nitrogen 14 coupling of intensity 1 to 1 is to 1 is to 1 should be there. Okay. So, this is xenon 14 coupling of 300 hertz. And in case what happens if the one of the by interestingly if you are going to label the system carbon 13 is labeled then in which case what will happen this xenon coupling is there this is xenon nitrogen 14 coupling and each of them is coupled because each line of this triplet of triplet a doublet of three lines of equal intensity three tri triplet is further split into doublet because of carbon coupling see this is 6000 hertz 300 hertz this is 7000 hertz and this is what the pattern you are going to get and if you look at the nitrogen 14 nmr of this molecule it is very broad because of nitrogen 14 relaxation all these things what happen of course this is a platinum nmr similarly you can do that there is no issue platinum chlorine if you look at it chlorine has different types of isotopomer like we saw in pcl3 varieties of isotopomers are present each of them is going to give you a peak okay this is the situation where all chlorine are 35 one is 35 others of 37 like that all isotopes you can consider for this molecule and you get different peaks 5 to 6 peaks all peaks intensity can be calculated based on the population of the distribution of the different type of isomers same thing you can do for bromine that means all when the halogens are substituted this type of isotopic effect is going to be dominant and the last example is germanium nmr spin is 9 by 2 and when it is coupled to proton germanium it is going to be a doublet obviously it is a doublet geh i am not worried about the ph3 part if it is take geh3 it has to be a quartet we got it ph part we are not worried about the coupling that may be far away so this is germanium it is spin by 9 by 2 quadrupolar spin coupled to spin half nuclear and we can analyze that and get the coupling in from this is a germanium proton coupling of 90 hertz about, about 100 close to 98 hertz. So, this is how we can analyze Germanian NMR, we saw Xenon NMR, etc. Lot of examples we took today. So, in summary, I told you today in this class, we have taken several other examples of different nuclei like selenium, xenon, platinum, and germanium, various examples we do. And we, we and nitrogen 15, nitrogen 14 NMR, several examples we took, and we could easily ass assign based on the multiplicity pattern and get all the coupling information. So, with this I have given you fairly an idea about analysis of the spectra of varieties of heteronuclei which you commonly come across in material chemistry, biochemistry, biological studies, bio NMR or simple organic chemistry organic molecules where you could think of proton, carbon, nitrogen 15, phosphorus, fluorine varieties of nuclei. So, at least you got a fairly idea when you have a different nuclei spin off coupled to spin off spin off coupled to spin the quadrupolar spin when you are detecting the quadrupolar spin which is coupled to spin off or which is coupled to spin 1 or other quadrupolar spin what is the pattern you are going to get and how you can interpret it looking at the pattern how we can get the couplings and we saw over the uh, period the couplings could be enormous in for example xenonium xenon proton coupling was 6000 hertz coupling strength can be different enormously different it could be few hertz to several thousands of hertz so all those things we observed when we observed when we studied different nuclei. So, I, I think you got a fairly idea about analysis the only spectra of not only proton carbon varieties of abundant and dilute spins both spin off and quadrupolar spin. So, further we can uh, continue but lot of work uh, nuclei there lot of isotopes are there which you can continue and do it there is no issue for that but I cannot keep on covering all the nuclei. I took several examples for this. I am going to stop here. From the next class, we will go to a completely a different topic. Thank you very much.